Hello everybody, welcome to my studio. Today we're going to paint a flower vase and we're taking inspiration from a painting created by artist Nadine Johnson. Nadine is a Calgary based artist. She does a lot of collage work, uh, so she would use paper collaging on canvas to do this. We're not going to do that, we're going to use paint, uh, but we're going to use her image as an inspiration. I really like her color. Uh, this painting is called Barely Blue, the vase is blue. I put the image at the beginning of the video. You can print it if you want to use her color scheme. You can make your own or you can just follow along with what I'm going to do today. So I think step number one, uh, we're going to paint the background. I'm going to stick to two brushes today. This one is a one inch brush. It's fairly big. This one is a half inch. I'm not going to go any smaller than this because there's no details in this work other than these little stems, which we can do with the flat side of the brush. So we're just going to go with big brushes and we're going to be bold. On my palette, I have white, dark brown, light brown, or they call it raw sienna or yellow ochre. I have a neutral gray. I have a blue, which is very similar to the blue that she's using. The specific name is on the list at the beginning of the video. I have two different greens, which you can't really see. Here, I'm going to pull them a little bit. You can see this one is a lot bluer than that one. That one has more of a yellowish base. They'll allow us to create variety in the green of the leaves and some yellow. So we're going to get started. The background is nice and layered. So I'm going to play with that. Of course, I'm not going to get exactly what Nadine manages to get, but that's OK. We don't care about that. We're just going to go and cover our background with very loose, kind of randomly distributed. We're going to start with a dark color because we will come back after and put some lighter effects on it. Okay, that's a starting base. Now my paper is nine inches by nine inches and I've taped it onto the table so it doesn't um, retain the wrinkles. It wrinkles a little bit when it gets wet. So the tape allows it to, to get back to its form, original form when it dries. So if you're using canvas, you don't have that issue. And you can use whatever support you want, it doesn't matter. Paper is fine for the demonstration, but you might like to use something different. So I have this dark layer. Now I'm going to come back on it and I'm going to create variation. So I'm, we're going to go a little bit lighter for the second layer. And we're just going to play, kind of looking at her image. And I'm going to leave more dark at the bottom to create this illusion of a floor. And then I'm going to go much lighter at the top. So I'm going to give myself a bit of a line, very loose, nothing fancy. That's enough. And then I'm going to go. So I've used the neutral gray with some white in it just to create this kind of grayish layer. But then we're going to come back and create layers that are a little more vibrant. So you probably notice that I'm letting my brush sort of go empty and, and then I go and dabble with it. It allows me to get these sort of transparent effects here and there, which are quite pleasing. Okay, 
we're gonna go with a, another layer that's gonna be even lighter and we're gonna add a little bit of sienna to it or this sienna or yellow ochre they're kind of the same color the yellow ochre is a little bit more yellow but they both work really well Okay, I think I'm gonna leave my background like this. I think it's good enough to work with. The next step is to sketch. Before you start sketching, you want your background to be dry because uh, otherwise you're just gonna, well, it's not gonna work, simply. <laughs> so I'm gonna start by putting the biggest shape, which is this stool. And it's at a bit of a tilted angle. So you get more of an, an odd, it's not a square. And, can't remember the name in English for the moment, but you know what I'm meaning by that shape. It's like a diamond shape almost. So I'm gonna use a 6B pencil. It's pretty uh, fat, so it should give me some strong lines. And I'm not gonna worry about the vase just yet. I'm just gonna give myself... So when you sketch, you really have to look. I have to look at your models. I'm looking at it and I'm seeing that the corner of my stool is just a bit above the suggested line of the floor here. And this corner here sort of falls off the page and ends up somewhere here. That corner is almost in line with that one, just a little bit higher. So pay attention to these things. They're important information when you're drawing. Your job as an artist, after your job, is to look. So if you don't look at your model, then why even bother having a model? You really have to pay attention to the information that's given to you visually. I'm gonna draw the vase. I'm not gonna worry about the flower just yet. I'm actually gonna paint the stool and the vase before I move on to the flowers and the leaves. So it's almost just a circle. I'm not sure if you can see that. So if you ignore the flowers, you left with sort of a bit of a circle or a balloon shape. And again, pay attention to the relationship between that circle and the stool. So you're about halfway up the stool, almost in line with that corner. Do you see that? And then you're not occupying the whole stool. There's two areas here that you can consider in terms of space. You need to leave that space on either side and you're starting again here. So you can make yourself a little line where you're starting, which is about in line with this. I always like to, to work with a center line. It really helps me build a shape. And when you're building a round shape, it's almost impossible to be symmetrical. Our ends have this ability to do a good round shape on one side and not on the other. I'm gonna paint the stool first. Uh, her stool is very much in this yellow ochre range with some gray a little bit in there. So I'm actually not gonna change my brush. I'm gonna keep working with my big, big brush. Let's see if I can do this whole painting with my big brush. The reason being is um, I feel that if you switch to a really small brush, you're most likely gonna end up tightening up and becoming, um, very stiff about the information you want to put down. We don't want to get to that. We just want to play and have fun. We don't want to become serious about this.
Now this is a good thing if you don't feel very much in control of your brush. All these brushes I use, they always offer you this really, really nice straight edge. That straight edge is perfect to make sure that you're doing a good job at keeping the line straight. So if you try and do it like this, you're most likely going to get over the line and it's going to be jaggedy. So this is a good idea to use the straight edge of your brush. Now, a lot of you at home are going to find that you don't have as easy a time as I do with this. That's just experience. It's nothing more. So take your time, pause the video, go back on the areas that you don't like. Don't get discouraged because you can't work fast or you don't get it right the first time. You're not supposed to get it right the first time. You're supposed to need practice. So I'm going back into it with brown just to create a little bit of texture and variation. My color is partly dry, which is kind of making it interesting because it's grabbing here and there. And then I'm going to lighten up. She's got a bit of a lighter area. Like that side of the stool is a bit lighter. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. But we're going to add these sort of gray, grayish touches. I think in our case, that's paper that she glued down. But we're just going to play with paint to create that. And they're almost like full brush strokes. So we're going to go with that. that I think it's really fun and then we're gonna move on to our blue I think it's called cerulean cerulean blue and we're gonna create the face in her face she's got a texture uh, because I think like a pattern I think she used a pattern paper that she glued onto like the surface we're not gonna really do that it's okay we're just gonna do blue if you want to add some of some patterns you can use a white acrylic marker and go back on and create that pattern I might do that we'll see let's paint it and see how we feel about it Okay, I'm going to go back and I'm going to create these dark areas here. They kind of feel a bit like um, uh, shadows of the leaves or, or, or the, the flowers, shadows of the flowers. So I'm going to create lighter areas and darker areas that will suggest the presence of shadows. So in this case, we're not really trying to be three dimensional. Um, in a lot of my tutorials, I insist that you pay attention to three-dimension forms. We really don't need that here. It's not um, the intention. 
those paintings are very much in the spirit of collage, which is very pretty. And with collage, you often get just two dimensional work. It's harder to do shapes with a big brush, which is kind of why I'm insisting on keeping it because it forces you to be a little looser with those shapes. Uh, before I move on, I'm gonna do the little legs. She's got two little legs here one here and one here and they're both in the blue tonality so before I change color I'm gonna go ahead and again when you draw your leg look at where it is look at where it starts it's starting just off the corner and it the middle would be about here so it's really tucked to the edge same thing on that side and it's a bit rounder and fatter at the top On this side it's a bit darker so I'm gonna give myself a little freedom here and I'm gonna go with this sort of shaded blue I'm also seeing um, some darker areas in the background on the floor or what should be the floor so I'm going to go ahead and put these in. And I feel like my angle is a little sharper than hers, so I'm going to I'm going to come and adjust that a little bit while I'm at it. I'm going to go with an almost dry paintbrush and I'm just going to do the little highlights that I see. So see I barely have any paint on my brush and the tip is almost empty. That's what you want when you're trying to create this transparent effect. And really we want to give texture to the ground. We don't want it to be so blend and monochromatic. I'm going to draw the leaves first and I'll put the flowers on top after. So again, you got to think about the relationship between everything. You really have to look. So if you ignore the flowers, you almost have like a star pattern or a starfish pattern. So it sort of starts from the center here and the leaves are sort of pushed out from that center. So that center would be about here. And we're going to go ahead and draw. I'm going to start with that big one at the top because I figure it's an important piece of information. And you see how it's almost pointing towards the corner here? So think about that when you're putting it in. You want it to reach for the top and point towards the corner. This one is going a little more like this. I'm going to vary the shape. I don't want them all to be like bunny ears or you know you kind of want them to change a little bit let me put that big one that big one goes almost all the way down to the bottom of the vase She kept the bottom leaves 
a bit darker, at least those two, and so the sort of center. This one is a bit lighter, but still darker than what you find here. So keep that in mind. And again, we've got two different greens. This one is very blue, so it's a good one to put as a backdrop. Now, when you start painting, if you decide that you're not quite happy with your lines, it doesn't matter because at the end, we're going to come and add lines, drawing lines, like mark making, I think they would call it. So don't worry about residual line that you are going to end up not following. That's totally fine. I'm going to go back and put some uh, yellow ochre into my green and create these sort of highlighted areas. I'm still quite a bit darker than what Nadine did, so I'll come and fix that after, but it's really a layering thing. You're not trying to do everything at once. You pick a color, you distribute it wherever you think it should go, like go all around your work. Don't just try and finish one leaf and, you know, place a judgment on it. That's not really an appropriate way to work because if you do that, you're going to end up with a bunch of leaves that have no relationship to each other. So by going around your entire piece, you're creating a relationship between every element. So by dabbing, you know, just a little bit in that leaf, a little bit in that other leaf, you're really establishing a connection between all the elements of your painting. I might add a little bit of brown onto some of the green. I'm feeling like some of her green got a little brown in them, which is nice and fun. It allows you to really push that, those darks. I believe that's it from this bit. So again, I blow dried my leaves, so we're ready to work on them. You can do the same at home, or you can just let it sit for like half an hour, an hour, and that should work. So we're gonna draw the shape of our flowers. Her composition, she, I find that her flower compositions are very strong. I'm loving how she's placed them in sort of this area. So she pushed her leaves to the left, and now she's pushing her flowers to the right. It's a very effective composition decision. Um, so I'm gonna stick with that. You can do whatever you want at home, but for me, I just love it. So I'm going with that. So when you draw flowers, it's a really good idea to Put your flowers in first. Don't really worry about the stems just yet because the main information is the flower, not the stems. You don't really have to make sense right away of where is that flower connected to the rest of the information. So you may not have 
uh, brushes that are as good as mine at home. But if you end up with a brush that's like this and stiff, don't use that. You're going to suffer so much. You really want to use a brush that's got a lot of flexibility and has that straight edge. And the key to avoiding this is to really wash them well. What happens is that on a brush like this, they fill up at the base and it dries and it opens up all the bristles. So when you wash your brushes, make sure you get everything out of the base here. So that means that you really have to be rough with them and um, dab them pretty hard at the bottom of your water bucket. Okay, let's move on. So we're gonna do white first and then we'll come and add some interest. So I'm not doing a perfect shape. I'm really trying to break the shape. It suggests that there's petals when you get these little break in the circle. That's already looking pretty sweet, isn't it? It's nice when you get to that stage of the painting and you see how the relationship between every element, like the stool on his own is boring, the vase on his own is boring, but when you put them all together, it changes, it becomes really interesting. Okay, so we're gonna add some touches of color. I think I'm gonna leave it like that. I'm feeling pretty good about the whole thing. The stool, I'm finding it a little bit bland. So I'm gonna see if I can wake it up a little bit by, I'm not sure how, let's see what we can do. Let's use that color just a bit more pure in some areas. Let's see what we get out of that. Now I want to do the stems for the flowers. So there's only three that are visible, this one and those two. This is a bit of a tricky shape to do. So if you have trouble with your big brush, that's when I think it might be an okay decision to move on to a smaller brush. And the stems are a bit lighter than the leaves. So we're gonna go with a lighter color. And don't be too fussy. Start and finish and you get what you get. Like don't don't try and go and fix it a dozen times. You're just gonna end up with this pile that you're not super happy with. This one kind of vanishes behind the leaves, which is very cute. And this one, I'm actually I've got a little mess here of white. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to kind of hide that. This is one thing with painting is if it makes no difference and you can cover something you don't like, go for it. Okay, now that I've put the base color on them, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna do just a little bit of that 
we don't want too much of this just enough to give it a little bit of presence and you see I'm, I'm really no like almost no paint on my brush and I'm really taking advantage of that straight edge another thing I'm doing is I'm resting my pinky on the paper or the table and it gives me a lot of stability I'm going to do a really, really light dab at the top. And we're going to do a little bit of mark making. So I'm going to use, um, I'm going to use a marker. Let's see how the marker will do. So when you're doing mark making, especially on a loose painting like this, you really don't want to uh, overwhelm the viewer with information. Like you're not trying to do perfect contour lines or you're just going in there and it's almost like your marker is a, a new presence on the canvas. So you're not trying completely to reinforce the information or to re-establish strongly the information that you have. What you're trying to do is add a layer of information. that's done I'm really happy with it I hope Nadine likes it too we'll see so we're gonna let it dry and then we'll take the tape off because it's so satisfying it's completely dry so we're gonna take this tape off and move things out of the way a little bit and I'll show it to you a bit closer So when you remove your tape, be gentle if you've used some paper, because you might get some tears if you're not gentle. So hold your paper down and then pull gently. If you're using a canvas, obviously you don't have that problem. And I've got some little paint leak under there. It's sticking. There we go. Oh, this is sweet. Look at this. What a lovely inspiration and I think we were very successful. So um, I recommend checking out Nadine's website. It's nadinejohnson.ca or Nadine, I say it in French. Um, go check out her website. She's got some really cool stuff. And um, I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you for the next project in my studio. It was really great to have you here today. Thank you. Mm -hmm.